How, how's it holding up? Fine. I can carry it for you if you want me to. No. What? You think I'm gonna take off with it? Did you see his face? It was worth the whole trip. It's kind of creepy, like, like he was the devil or something. I've never seen a man like that before in my entire life. The devil ain't real. How do you suppose that? Have you even seen the devil? My dad has a picture of Jesus on his wall, but there ain't a picture of the devil. Yeah, but that don't mean nothing. I got a picture of a sea monster on my wall that I drew, but I've never seen a sea monster before. When you guys go into auditions back and forth, running around and everything, uh, what have you guys been, I guess, missing or giving up? You know, like is it having friends, sleepovers, what kind of things do you guys have to kind of put to the side so that you can do this? I think that. I give up the most hanging out with my friends, but I mean I do it all day at school, mm -hmm. so it's not I'm not really missing out on anything. But you know, it's sort of it doesn't upset me. It it's just you know less time that I can spend with my friends over the summer because you know I see on Facebook all the time my friends are always like, hey, you know I'm hanging out at so and so's house today, and you know I can't put that up. Um, and I've given up a lot of birthday parties and there was actually one time where I was going to go to a birthday party. There was no, there was no change. I was going to go and we had we had set that day so we had not had anything go over and booked it because I had not been to a birthday party in like a long time. But someone called two days before the birthday party and said, we would really like Kaylee um, at wherever for um, wh whatever. And it was big. I mean, and I didn't want to pass it up. So mm -hmm. I gave up the birthday party to go work on set. And I'm, I'm happy that I did. But I would have really liked to go to the birthday party. But I mean, I know that I'm going to have to give up something to go work on a film. And I'm not sad about it. I mean, I will. I'll give up going to a friend's house. I'll give up going to a birthday party. I give up going to school dances, too. Like, I'll have to leave right after school to go or work on, work on an audition or go to an um, audition. And so, I mean, it's not really... I'm used to it now. It's not anything new to me. Mm -hmm. It's just, I have to give up a school dance. Okay, so what? I mean, I'm going to have more school dances. And I give up going to a friend's house. Okay, I'll be able to hang out with my friends another day. It's just, you get used to it after a while. You know, it's not something where you're, every time you have to give up going to a friend's house, you're like, oh, darn, I really wanted to go to their house, but now I can't. And you, like, get all emotional about it. I mean, it's now, it's, you know, it, I'm used to it, and it doesn't upset me. It's just, okay, whatever, you know, I'm gonna go on set. I mean, I think I have more fun on set than if I would go to my friend's house and spend the night over there mm -hmm. at their house and stay up all night. I feel like I have way more fun on set, and I've spent my time more wise, wisely than just, you know, going over to a friend's house and doing nothing set watching movies. <laughs> so I feel like I've gotten, you know, I'm using my brain more than just sitting and staring at a TV screen. When I first started, they were all, they were like, oh, but you really can't come to my house, but I wanted you to. And I'm like, I'm sorry, guys, it's, I can't. But now they're, and I tell them, and they're like, oh, that's so cool. I mean, they think it's cool now and they mm. like it and they're not sad about it if you know I miss their birthday party or I miss a dance it's just or if I have to leave half a day mm -hmm. um, from school it's they understand now what it's about so. have you found that you know some of your friends are okay with it any things you've had to miss or yeah my friends since they're still in their like young ages they, they probably don't know the acting life, but I do a lot, and I, like, have to, like, leave school early, and, like, then the next day, my friends are like, man, where have you been? 
like I missed you yesterday and you missed practice because mm -hmm. we do a lot of practice for football if we wanted to get in football but I probably don't have time for that I'm like guys I'm starting this new life of acting so <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to miss some days of school so you're, you're both totally okay with it. Yes. yes. You like it so, that much mm -hmm. that you're yes. willing to yes. get everything up. That's great. Yes. That probably couldn't be cooler. <laughs> we really like it. It's it's sort of a new part of our life now. It's just worked its way into our daily schedule. I mean, it's nothing new to us. It's It feels like it's been with us forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, it feels like it's been with us our whole life, not just, you know, four years or even, like, two months with him. I mean, it's felt like it's been there forever mm -hmm. and we're just used to it you know it's you know it's a part of our life now like I said I mean great positive outlook on it yes well and I think too that because of their experiences on set it's not painful to go mm -hmm. it's fun and everybody on set makes it fun for them and they're you know generally pretty child friendly and mm -hmm. want them there and treat them like um, just you know, part of the team, and so I think that that's why missing a school dance isn't that big of a deal, or, you know, when I tell Kaylee, I'll see if I can reschedule you, I'll see if we can get a different time, and she'll say, well, did they give you that time, and, and I said, yeah, that's the time they told me to bring you, well, you can't ask, <laughs> <laughs> so she says, you can't ask for something different, and I said, well, I mean, I will, and she says, no, if they told you I have to be there at this time, then that's the time they want me there, so, I mean, she's become very disciplined as far as understanding and appreciating people's time when they're casting or mm -hmm. when they're working and just understanding how important it is to be on time to set, to be prepared to go to set, to when you're there you're working. It's not, you know, it's yeah. not a joke. It's people's lives. I mean, it's, it's, yes. it's what people do for a living. So mm -hmm. um, I think that that's helped her give up some things and it's starting to help him sacrifice and miss out on. When he goes to after school, yeah, his little friends, they play football, but there are days I have to go get him and we have to come home and get an audition in by five o'clock. Yeah. You know, it comes at noon and they want it by five. We gotta go. <laughs> you know, it's get in the car, let's go. Here are your lines while you're heading in the car. Right. Um, and you gotta do it. So, you know, it's it's just become part of our everyday life. That quick scramble. Yes. Yeah, that quick scramble. We're getting better at that. it. <laughs> We're getting real good at that. I just actually got some really good news and I am SAG AFTRA eligible now. Fantastic. Yes. Now I'll be able to do, you know, SAG things after uh, just now I've widened my chances to be able to be in films because I wasn't SAG before. It will help my chances with getting into something big. Now for, for everybody who may not be familiar with what exactly that means, yes. um, just give us kind of a quick, you know, why is that such a big deal? Because it, it clearly is. Yes. Clearly it, a big deal. Yes. SAG is Screen Actors Guild, and this SAG means that you can work in a union state mm -hmm. instead of just non-union. Once you work on a SAG set, you become SAG. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter, it, but you have to have a speaking line. You do have to have a speaking line. You can't just be in the background and automatically think, oh, I'm SAG eligible now. No, you have to have one line that you say. If it's one word, if it's a whole paragraph, I mean, it's one sentence, then you become SAG. And then AFTRA is for, um, like, commercial television. television. Mm -hmm. And if you want to work on television or, um, like it's yeah. radio, yes, television and radio and some com commercials. Mm -hmm. it's commercial. it's, yeah, commercials National too. Commercial. So, but none of this is involved with print. Print is its own self, but it's mostly everything on a TV screen or a movie screen. And they will tell you if it is a SAG set or, um, if you will become SAG or AFTRA, if you have a speaking line, they will tell you clearly in the email or on the um, audition. Mm -hmm. I think too, because we do live in a non-union state, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, they're all non-union. And we get lots of productions now that come from LA. 
And I think that what ends up happening is, is the big productions bring folks from California, and they don't look at our north at our southeast representation. And we have very capable actors, adults and children, mm -hmm. um, who can fill those roles just as well as someone from California can. So I think now having that piece for her will give her opportunities to work on or at least audition for some of those bigger productions that do come to this area. If your ultimate goal is to, is to make this your life and, and be, be an actor, be an actress, work in this business, then yes, having that union representation is very important because you're going to eventually probably end up in, in New York or in California, you know, to work, um, either through moving there and, and securing work that way or auditioning and getting to be able to go there to work. So, you know, if someone allows her to audition and, and she books something that's in a union state, she now has the ability to go and mm -hmm. they don't have to do anything for her. She's already done the legwork to get that piece of the puzzle. So I think that it makes, it gives you some street cred. I, that's what it basically does. It gives you a little street cred in the acting world. I want to say that don't think that once you get started, if you're a year or two into it, you are going to end up you know, being SAG or after eligible, it may happen, you know, that's very, it's a very slim chance though. I mean, I've been working three, almost four years and I just now got it. You have to do the, the back work. You have yes. to do the, the hard work to get, to get to, those rewards. Yes. So, you know, you have to, you do have to sacrifice a lot to get those, these little rewards that you get along the way. So mm -hmm. this is, you know, this was when she started, she had a goal sheet, and one of her goals was to become SAG eligible. At that time, it had not merged with AFTRA, but it's merged now. And so, you know, she's achieved one of her little bucket list items, and so, you know, now she's got new goals that she set for herself over the next year, so we'll see what happens with those. Be very leery of anyone in a mall <laughs> that tells you that your child can be the next Disney star. Mm -hmm. Disney stars are found by Disney people in, in the land of Disney. So you almost have to be in the land of Disney or have access to the land of Disney or have the ability to go out to LA for pilot season um, to become part of the Disney phenomena. It's mm -hmm. really a phenomena. Um, there's a great organization called bizparents.org and they're online and the ladies that run it, Paula, uh, Dorn and Ann Henry, they are well versed in all of the scams and things that are out there that are taking people's money. Uh, parents of children mm -hmm. um, who walk into different little organizations and they say, "We can make you. Would you like to meet? I can get you on the audition with. You're going to be the next. You're so you know cute, sweet, smart, funny." They'll tell you these things, and yes. I think my children are cute, sweet, smart, and funny. Um, everybody does. They're, they're your children. Yeah. If you don't think they're cute, sweet, smart, and funny, then wait. Yeah. But um, that is a pitfall that parents fall into very quickly, is that their child shows a spark of personality, and or they're very, very cute and have personality, and people say, well, they should be in a commercial. <laughs> and they should, probably. Um, but it's, it's a matter of doing your homework as a parent and asking lots of questions and making sure that the people you are attaching your child to are reputable people mm -hmm. and that they have a good reputation in this business and there is nothing wrong with asking other people about agents and managers and production companies and directors there's nothing wrong with this is your child yeah i was going to say is that especially you know that i don't know if you found when the like groups like the Charlotte acting community, yes, that come in really handy because yes. they'll obviously know. I can who ask any of talk people. to right. I can ask anybody in the Charlotte film community. Maybe a new person has started a production company and they've come from a different place, and I can ask people, "Do you know so and so that they you know are asking me about Kaylee or Christopher?" Um, but I think it's it's the bigger names that are in that scam you know department mm -hmm. that I think lots of people are familiar with. Uh, that do take your money and they do take advantage of parents and they do want you to come and promise you the sun, the moon, and the stars and then um, take our classes and you know you don't pay an agent to represent you you don't uh, they, they get their money when you work that's mm -hmm. how that works and so for someone to tell you you have to pay me for me to get you work 
that's not how it works. That's not how the business works. And that that website, bizparents.org, they really have an answer to every single question a parent could have. I think, too, that you have to be very careful who you give your child's information to. There are creepy people out there. That's just the bottom line. Um, whether my kids were actors, whether they were athletes, whether they were just kids down the street. Yeah, they're still... There's still creepy people out there. The yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you need to be very aware of that. You need to remember that every time you send your child's head to shot to somebody, it's going into someone's email, and someone is getting a hold of that, and someone has their information. And you want to be sure whoever you're sending it to is legit and reputable and not, not scammy. The first um, thing that I self-submitted Kaylee for was through uh, an ad on Craigslist. And I sent an email and said, um, I saw that you're looking for a little girl, 8 to 12 Caucasian. And I said, I have a little girl, 8 to 12 Caucasian. I, I don't know who you are. And I don't know what this is. And I don't know anything. Can you call me? Can you get back to me? And I got a wonderful email back from a very nice guy down in Mint Hill. And he said, we're legitimate. We'll meet with you. We'll talk with you. We'll tell you anything you want to know. Please don't feel obligated, you know, all of that. And I, Kaylee has worked with that particular production company several times. Mm -hmm. And every time we work, I say, you know, it's your fault that all of this has happened. <laughs> and he says, I'm glad. I'm glad it's my fault. I'm thankful that it's my fault. But I, I didn't know, you know, initially what else to say except who are you yeah. and, and what are you doing and why do you want pictures of little girls? <laughs> so, um, and I asked and he, it, I got a great response back. And, and yes, ha have I met some people along the way that have made me pause and, and have we turned down roles? Absolutely. Have I read scripts and said, this isn't right for Kaylee? This isn't what I want her portrayed as or I want her to experience? Absolutely. Um, and, and people have been very generally understanding about it. They're okay with it. So. I do take the time to make sure that whatever she's working on or he's working on is credible mm -hmm. and legitimate and safe and not weird. Um, but I think that that's a pitfall is that you fall in very quickly to what someone else is telling you and you know you, you want your child to be, they want to be on the Disney Channel, they want to be Nickelodeon, they want to work with Fred and you know, all those yeah. funny people. but. Um, you, you have to be in the land of Disney typically to be to be on the Disney Channel. So um, I think that's a pitfall that happens a lot to mommies and daddies is you parade your child in front of these people who promise you things and they take your money. Right. And then you don't you're still in you're still in, you know, North Carolina. <laughs> still trying. So um, I would say ask lots of questions and it's okay. And if you don't get the answers that you want, keep asking or or let it go. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you just have to let it go, and, and, and that's okay. Janice spends countless hours on the computer. Yeah, and it pays off. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of research. A lot of research. A lot of research. And, and her agents are great about letting me self-submit her as long as I let them know what I've submitted them for. They're great about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's another misconception, too. You, you know, some parents don't see the behind the scenes, all the work that Janet puts into it, finding Kaylee work a lot of times. And they just think it's going to knock on their door. Right. And, and that's not you know, in any way, shape, or form how it happens. You have to be you, very you proactive. Have to, you, have you have to pound the pavement, like they used to say, you know, and find work. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you look hard enough or deep enough or network enough, it comes. It does come. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I do spend a lot of time on the computer researching. And that would be another sacrifice. A lot of time personal time spent mm -hmm. doing research. Mm -hmm. On a typical, I guess, day-to-day -day or audition-to-audition -audition mm -hmm. type of schedule, mm -hmm. um, is it just you guys that are involved in getting her ready to go? No. Or <laughs> it's who, a team. We have a team. Stuff? We have a team. Um, team of experts. That we have a team of experts. I, you know, it's funny. The name that's on a mom that handles typically their child's business aspect, which is what I do, is a momager, which is a funny um, title. And people say, "Well, you're Kaylee's manager. You're Kaylee and Christopher's manager." And I guess that's true. If you look at the terminology of the acting world and what a manager does, yeah, I guess I am their manager. I manage their time. I manage their schedule. I manage their practice, you know, and get them where they, so yes, I guess I am the manager. Um, do I take that role seriously? Absolutely, because they take this seriously, so, you know, yeah. But we have um, great agents 
that submit them for work. And then um, I also have, you know, certain people that I work with as far as hair for, you know, Kaylee's hair. I know people are like, well, you know, what, what do you do with her hair? It's straight, it's blonde, and there she is. But yet when we're on set, you know, you have your hair and makeup team that you work with. And I typically consult with them prior to production days to talk about what we're going to do with her. And mm -hmm. she's been on a few sets where she's had to have her hair darkened. So we talk about how we're going to do that and where it won't damage or keep her hair permanently, you know, things like that. So we've got managers, we've got agents, we've got um, photographers that we work with for pictures, headshots, comp cards, and we've worked with a lot of great photographers. And we have two in particular that we work with a lot. Um, and so they're able to pretty much, on an, you know, I just actually communicated with one about getting some new headshots for fall and winter. We do that. We try to do headshots three to four times a year because <laughs> they're kids and they're growing and they're changing and teeth are yeah, in and out and hair and you know whatever. So um, we do do that a lot. We have our photographers. We have um, so it, it is a, mostly it's the, the agents that I talk with, and I do talk with Kaylee's North Carolina agent almost every day, mm -hmm. just about different projects and submissions and what she's up for and not up for and. So you really have to be able to communicate with lots of different people and be, be there for them. And, you know, that's why the iPhone, the smartphone, the, all those phones that do all these things now, you know, I can be in my classroom and get an email and respond quickly enough to be able to say, yeah, we can be there. No, we can't. So mm -hmm. um, that's the beauty of it all is, is the craziness of it all. <laughs> Is that fair to say? The yeah. beauty of it is the craziness? Definitely. Because um, it, is, it, is, it is exciting. It is exciting when they book. And it is exciting when they're on set. Um, and I, you know, it's funny because people say, well, I'll, I'll give you a credit for wardrobe because you, you know, no. I, this isn't me. <laughs> I, I don't want credit for anything. You know, I want my kids to do what they want to do and be happy. So mm -hmm. um, it's been good. It's been good. But that's typically who who is involved in the team. And then when we were in New York last summer, she had agent representation there that we worked with and they communicated with me and one was a manager and then three were agents. So, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of, lot of conversations going on last summer, which mm -hmm. was great. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, once again, we have been talking with Dave, Jana, Kaylee, and Christopher Tolson, and I can't thank you guys enough for letting us come in and talk to you thank today. You. Um, thank you. It's been really great to get to know you and listen how you all work to get you two into the movies and hopefully get something big. Hopefully I'll be seeing you on quite a few things in the future. Yeah. Um, be great. Once again, thank you, thank everybody. You. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you very, you very much. much. And I have been Anna Wright for the Geek Spotty Network. Be sure to check them out. the last time I saw her and the last time I see.